Joining me now, New York Times bestselling author of the book Inside Trump's White House, the real story of his presidency, and presidential historian Doug Weed. Doug, if the queen's not safe either, then no one is. <laughs> no one is safe. There is no end to this madness, Natalie. For one thing, they should shut down Oxford University, which produced all these colonial greats. I mean, the Cherokee Nation, the Cherokee Indian Nation, up till 1860, when the Civil War began, owned 4,000 African slaves. Those are the Indians. I mean, if you started eliminating every city and, and river <laughs> named after an Indian tribe in America, you would strip it of almost all its names. So there's no end to this. And uh, that uh, previous speaker in the clip you showed is right. Queen Elizabeth has done more than most uh, to, to end racism in the British Empire. She's such an incredible person, really. There's no one like her in the world right now. And to go after her, especially is just an unbelievable thing. Do you think that the Meghan Markle and the Prince Harry debacle, that that's somehow inspiring these attacks now to treat the royal family as if they are racist? It could be. I referred to the British Empire by mistake. I meant the Commonwealth. The British Empire ruled the world for a hundred years, and there have been tyrants all over the world uh, black and white. Idi Amin was a tyrant. He was an African who murdered many people. And Pol Pot murdered almost half his population. Mao Zedong was Asian, and he killed tens of millions of people. Queen Elizabeth has brought liberty to tens of thousands of people all over the world. And the British em Empire, which became the British Commonwealth, uh, helped end slavery. Slavery was ended in Great Britain before it was ended in the United States. I'll tell you this about uh, Queen Elizabeth. When I worked in the White House, I learned very quickly that the ceremonial role for the president of the United States consumed almost half of his time. And that's what they have in England. They have a prime minister who runs the country and a queen who assumes the ceremonial role. If they got rid of the queen, they, they would have to hire somebody else to do all that work with all their staff because every nation has to have that ceremonial role. Every ambassador from every country, 150 countries, have to present their credentials. So the the money spent on the monarchy in Great Britain, to, in my belief, is well spent. And everybody's so enchanted with that lifestyle and with the queen. Of course, we don't have a king or queen here. We remember 1776, but we all are kind of enchanted with that lifestyle. And over there, they're, they're losing that. They're kind of starting to become Americanized in a bad sense of the term. We're already seeing now, even with their football team, which is soccer, kneeling now at the start of games. Do you see them following our example with cancel culture? Because they've also kind of led the way in other respects in terms of thought policing. But now we're seeing more visual demonstrations. Absolutely. And it it's at the heart of it uh, is... <laughs> is the indoctrination, the Marxist indoctrination, which is to force uh, society to change. And uh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. <laughs> so that, that's how it was described in Animal House by George Orwell. And that was the illustration he used. So yes, absolutely, they're getting it from us, but we're getting it from them. It's uh, Marxism at its core. And it's scary to see it happening right before our eyes. But there you go. And it is unreasonable. And it's intended to be unreasonable. The Queen, we don't often get to see any emotions from her because it's all about the crown. But what do you think she thinks when she sees this going on? She's lived through world wars. She's seen so much travesty in the past. Do you think she has a better position in terms of knowing where we're going with this? Or do you think this is uncharted territory for her, too? I think she's rock solid. She knows what Nazism did to the world and the Holocaust and what Joseph Stalin did to the world. And Great Britain stood uh, like a rock uh, defending Western civilization. And once again, Western civilization is under attack uh, with this wokeism and with this Marxism being crammed down our throats. I think she understands very clearly 
but she's wise enough not to be provocative. Uh, she'll keep a steady hand <laughs> as long as long as she can stay there. She'll keep a steady hand. She's an inspiration. She really is. Doug, thanks for coming on. We always look forward to talking with you. Had no idea we'd end up having to talk about the queen. It's so sad, but it just shows <laughs> they're after everything. We have to preserve our history. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, Natalie.